Hi, welcome. I'm Mrs. Bear, and welcome to my class. I just wish that I could see all oh, you boys and girls. I, I, I'm missing the, the students in my class, and I, and I just was hoping that everybody is doing well. I want to say hi to Katrin, and Jack, and Josie, and Cooper, and Trevor, and Kate, and Sully, and Avery, and Mackenzie, Everett, Grant, and Aubrey. And you know what? If we would have our classroom, if we would be in our classroom, there would be more children that we would get from Miss Liz's class. There's four of them that moved up to our class. So we have to welcome them. And they will be Stella, say hi to Stella, and to Jackie, and to Charlie, and to Oliver. They would be in our class. So that, that's great. And, and also others that are watching the video, we, let's show them how we do the church. We would make a church with our hands. Do you remember that? You take the back of your hands and put, put them back to back and then intertwine your fingers. And then you point, point your, your uh, index fingers up to, the, up to the sky. And now you have a church. This is Bowsman UCC. And here's the steeple. You open the doors, and here's the people. Did you get that? Should we do it one more time? Put your hands back to back, intertwine your fingers, and close them. And then put your fingers, your index fingers, point them to the, to the sky, and then you can say, this is our church. Here's the door, open the door. Here's the steeple, open the door, and here's the people. Well, just want to say welcome to everybody, and we're going to continue our lessons in the book of Genesis, and we're going to be uh, focusing on actually Genesis chapter 12. Today we'll be uh, talking about how we can obey God and walk in his ways. He loves to lead us to good things, and after the great flood was over, people began to fill the earth again. So when a Abraham... So we're going to tell, learn about the story of Abraham. Abraham walked a long way as he obeyed God. And we, when we obey him, we will, it will show us where to go. But he will love us more than anyone else. So obeying him is the best thing that we can do. So I'm going to let you know about what God had for Abram. Abram was a man who lived in the city of Ur. Ur was a big city full of fountains and trees and houses. Abram and his wife Sarai had lived in Ur in all their lives. Their friends and family all lived in Ur too. They had a home and many well, workers uh, had helpers work for them. Now there was something different about Abram. Abram loved God. He often talked about God, and one day God told Abram, Abram something very surprising. And I'm going to tell you what that is in Genesis 12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. Wow, that was surprising. But Abram believed God. He and Sarai and all their helpers got ready for this long trip. They probably had sold most of their things because they wouldn't need to take them on their trip. It would be more like camping for a long, long time. The family packed up pots for cooking, filled baskets with food. They tied their clothes and tents into big bundles. They rolled rugs and blankets to tie onto the camels and donkeys. They filled water bags with water, and they said goodbye to all their friends and relatives. Abram and Sarai and their family began to walk. Now the nephew um, Lot also went along with them. Even if they rode camels or donkeys some of their time, there was a lot of walking. There were no cars, no air conditioning. 
They couldn't stop at a hotel for a meal. They, when they found water, they had to fill up their water bags. Whenever they stopped, they would put up their tents, build a fire, cook food, and then rolled up on their blankets. There was no movie, no TV. Instead, what do you think they did? They watched the stars. When it was time to move on the next day, they would pack up everything again, get fresh water in the water bags and start walking. They must have wondered where they were headed, but Abram trusted God. He was willing to obey God, even if they wondered when they'd get to the land God promised. Abram was sure that God knew where to go. Sooner or later, they were going to reach that place where God had promised to bring them. And Abram was sure that one day, God would tell them that it was time to stop. For days and months, they traveled this way. They stopped a while, but then God would tell them it was time to go. So they would pack up the tents and the blankets and rugs and pots. Their servants would whistle for their animals and everyone would move on again. One day they came to a place of hills and valleys with good grass and water for sheep and goats and cows. This is the land I promised to you, God told Abram. It was beautiful. The land was called Canaan. They hadn't gotten lost, even though they'd never even seen a map. Of course, they didn't have GPS or anything. After Abram and his nephew Lot moved to different parts of the land, God repeated his promise to Abram. He said, I'm going to give you all of this land to you and your children forever. You'll have more grandchildren than anyone can count. Abram put up his tents again near some great big trees and they were staying. Now, the very first thing Abram did was build a place to worship God. He praised and thanks God for bringing him and his family safely to the place God had promised them. What do you think you would have done if you were Abraham? Abram, it's not always easy or comfortable or convenient to obey God, but it's always worth it. And here's one reason why. And I'm going to read from the book of Jeremiah, which is also in the Old Testament, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. God has the most awesome plans for us. We're part of his bigger, better plan. When we obey him, we will, he will lead us and show us where to go. We can always trust him because he knows what is best for us. There is nothing better than obeying him. God's plan is for us to obey him. Uh, let's think of different things about a list of jobs. Are there many jobs that are available? What job, did you ever think of what job you would like to do as you're growing up? Let's name different jobs that, that people do. Can you name some? There's a policeman, there's firemen, nurses, doctors, pilot, astronauts, teachers, maybe, maybe you'd even want to be play sports, be a, a pro uh, hockey player or a football player. I want to share something with you that my daughter, she, when she was in third grade, she was eight years old, and in her Sunday school class, her teacher wanted them to draw a picture of what they wanted to do when they grew up. And what she did, she, she drew a picture of a nurse. And, to, and she accomplished that. She, she had that, that desire to be, that's what she wanted to do. She took the proper classes that she needed to, um, to get her 
uh, high school, she graduated from high school, she went to nursing school, and she also went to college to get her bachelor's degree in nursing. And today she's one of the best nurses. She, we're very proud of her. So, so you can plan on what you want to do when you grow up. But the very best plan is to obey God. Obeying Him makes our lives a big adventure and best life ever. One thing that God wants is to care uh, is to care for others and help others. So what I would like to do, and what we've actually been doing different several years, different holidays, we've been making cards for the vets, vet, the veterans. And with Veterans Day coming up, November the 11th, we need to start thinking of what kind of cards and, and we want to do and to send cards to them. So. What, what you can do is you can fold your construction paper in half or do it in quarters to make, make, it in, um, make it this size. Now just use markers or you can use crayons or pencil crayons. You can use stickers, you can draw. Just don't use any um, glitter or sequins or anything like that. They don't want anything like that on the things. So you can write whatever you want, you can draw. And inside if you want to draw, your, uh, write your name, just your first name, okay? And then, we'll take two weeks to do that. You can do it this week and maybe even next, next uh, session. And maybe you can drop them off at, at the church. Hopefully you'll make maybe two or three of them or even more if you'd like. And drop them off at the church at the um, ramp door. There's a letter slot, drop them in there. And I will collect them and I will put them in this envelope and we will send them to the, um, the Veterans Hospital in Lebanon. We've been doing that, and they really appreciate your cards. In fact, I've been getting thank you, thank you notes from them stating how much the veterans appreciate the cards. So I hope that you will, you will uh, make a couple cards for the veterans. Let's, let's pray. Thank you, God, for being with us, loving us, and keeping us safe. Help us to obey our, obey our parents and teachers and to be kind to others. Please watch over us this coming week. Amen. Have a good week. Love you.